here we have a flash drive that came in for data recovery. Customer mailed over the package like this. That's a new flash drive here. And he mailed over the broken one. And the broken one was put in multiple bags. The broken USB socket, the board, and one broken pin that was put in a small zip bag. We do not need that pin, but it was included. Now, my wife organized all the stuff that needs data recovery in this bin here. We have a lot of hard drives, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six hard drives, and we have about seven flash drives that we need to go over. So I picked this one from the bucket, and let's go ahead and see how easy or difficult data recovery is on this flash drive, considering we can get it done. Let's say, for example, we have a broken NAND chip, or maybe we have a damaged controller chip then it's unlikely that we will be able to get data. But right now, right off the bat, I see damaged pins. We see a broken USB connector, and we also see three ripped pads. And you cannot see anything right here. And we have somebody that came in, and nobody's here to talk to him but me. Just a minute. So right now, looking at this board, we can tell that we have three missing pads and we have missing traces. Actually, we still have this trace right here, we can tell. This one is going here. This pad is going here. And finally, this pad is going right over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to solder a four pin socket onto here, ground, D minus D plus and VCC or the main power line. I have a bucket full of connectors and drives that we can use for donor parts. And this one looks like it will do. Let's take a look. And right there. We had a customer that came in, so I had to stop the recording. But before I pushed on that record button again, I went over the legs and I soldered the socket pins directly to the resistors. Let me show you what I mean. What I did is I made sure that this pin is making a good connection with this resistor, the 2.2 ohm resistor. I did measure this resistor and it's good. I soldered that socket pin directly to the resistor. Same here. And the ground pin is already soldered to ground. So we have very solid connections, but the drive is still not recognized by the computer. What I want to do is put the meter in continuity mode like this. I'm going to put the probe inside. And we see it's making a connection. I'm going to move that probe to the second pin. And it's making a connection. Those resistors are about 2 or 3 ohm resistors. So the meter is going to beep. Let's move on to pin number 3. And we do have a solid connection. And let's move on to the positive pin here. And we should have a continuous path to right here. So we know that the pins are soldered on properly and the problem has nothing to do with the soldering of the pins. Meter in ohms mode, let's measure this resistor. 2.3 ohms, perfect. What about this one here? 2.5 ohms, give or take, 2.5 ohms. So everything on this side of the board is good. Nothing concerning on this side of the board. The connector is good, the connections are good, and the resistors are good. What about this one here? This one is measuring 10 ohm. And this one is measuring 1 mega ohm. I honestly do not know if 1 mega ohm for this resistor is normal. So that's almost 1 mega ohm. And if we look on back of the board, Let's see if we have a short on any one of those caps. Meter in diet mode. No short. No short. And we don't have a short. What if we measure this resistor? What do we get? That's half a mega ohm. If we look at the controller chip, Let's make sure all the pins are making a solid connection.
yeah all good I mean right now I have two options option number one is to reflow the NAND chip maybe some of the solder balls under it are cracked or not making a good connection I mean the socket on this flash drive was broken in half so it's possible that there was a lot of stress put onto that chip and maybe some solder balls under that chip got disconnected very possible it doesn't look like it but it's possible I'm trying to see if we have similar flash drives that we can compare the reading to but it doesn't look like I do I think this one is similar right there this one is similar yeah I got a similar donor board that we may be able to read the value from I just want to make sure that that resistor should measure around one mega ohm so we have those two they should measure around three ohms and we have three ohms that's correct 2.7 ohms that's very good and this one on the customer's board it measured around 10 ohms and here we have 14 ohms which is more like it and this one on the customer's board measured this resistor measured one mega ohm or 986 kilo ohms and what does it measure here and we are measuring 0.9 K which is correct so that resistor is good I mean is that the same controller chip it's a different controller chip so it's not going to work out why don't we go ahead and reflow the NAND chip and see what happens if reflowing the NAND chip does not fix the problem then it's most likely a controller chip issue because everything else on the board is good and that's enough now all we have to do is test and see if that fixed the problem the flash drive is on but Windows is not able to recognize it I mean right now we do not have a short anywhere on that board all capacitors are good resistors all measured good the socket is making a good connection on all four pins we reflowed the NAND chip and the only thing that is left on the board is the controller chip and right now it's not possible to replace the controller chip unless we have exactly the same one from that same series and batch of flash drives so let's go ahead and turn on the thermal cam and look at this the controller chip is very hot so that confirms that our problem is the controller chip I mean let me know what would you do for those who work in the same type of business or people who work in data recovery what would you do if you have a bad controller chip right now if we cannot find exactly the same flash drive with exactly the same chip we're gonna deem this repair and no fix or data recovery is not possible so that's it, I'm going to put this one on the side until I figure out if we can buy exactly the same flash drive and possibly transfer the controller chip. And we'll work on some of the other data recovery stuff that we have here in a future video. All right, so let's put this one on the side and work on another one. Flash drive broken, Lexar, same issue.
broken socket. And this one kind of looks the same. This flash drive looks similar to the one we just worked on. Look at this. It would be my lucky day if that controller chip is the same because we would hit two birds with one stone. I mean, this flash drive is exactly the same, but I do not know if the controller is the same. Look at this. Exactly the same drive. So the controller reads SM3257EN. Let me just quickly compare the other flash drive and see if we have the same controller. All right, and the controller we have here is EN3257LT. So the number reads different. This one is EN and this one is SM, and at the end we have EN or LT. 3257, 3257, so the middle numbers are correct, but the side numbers are not correct. I honestly do not know if that makes a difference, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Right now, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other flash drive. And it's exactly the same issue also. We have the ground pad and the rest are missing. Exactly the same. Now we can apply some flux and run jumper wires. We need to run three of them. Ground is already secured. And what I'm going to do is also secure the sides so this connector does not go loose when we try to connect it. All right, so the connector is solid now. And finally, we're going to do this wire. Now we're going to test using our multimeter in continuity mode. We want to make sure that those jumper wires are doing their job. So we're going to measure from here right here we should get a bit because that's a three ohm line or two ohm two ohms line and ground ground is good the drive should work unless there's also a controller issue then that's a problem let's go ahead and check maybe we can Maybe we can do this. And fume extractor off. We're gonna plug it in. I do see the light and right there, yes. We are able to see the files on this flash drive. We're gonna start with the backup. After I'm done with the backup, we're gonna attempt to remove the controller chip from this drive and solder it onto the other flash drive for the other customer and see if we are able to see files. If yes, then we had two birds with one stone. One way to find that. Let me start by backing up the files. Backup is complete. This controller chip is from the first flash drive. I'm gonna label it with one. So we know that this one is the bad one. And maybe we can put an X also. 
so we do not confuse it. And this one is the second ship, the good one. Now we do not care if we messed up this drive anymore because we already backed up the files. And now we're gonna solder it right over here. Who knows, we may get lucky. Right, and now we're gonna press down. We're gonna press and hold while we apply hot air. That should be enough. All right. Of course, we're gonna test all the pins and make sure all the pins are solid. There's no reason why they should not be. I do not like to do things twice. Connected, connected, connected and connect it so what do you think do you think it's gonna work right here and one way to find out i'm plugging that drive in it's plugged in and same problem usb device not recognized same problem let me know what you think Right now, disk management cannot see that drive, and I also tried to plug that drive onto a Mac, and it was not seen, it was not recognized. So, I do not know what to do at this point. It's possibly a controller chip issue, and this one is not compatible, because the numbers are different, and that's what I mean when I say we have to have exactly the same controller, same batch, same series of those flash drives. Otherwise, it's not gonna work, unless there's a problem with the NAND chip itself. Nothing else could cause files not to be read right now. That's it. We're going to end it right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I will do something else in the next video.